Hi, I'm Victor. We all been in a situation where we are backing up in a car or truck and wish we had someone standing outside to make sure we didn't hit anything. This is called spotting. And having a spotter is a great way to prevent accidents when vehicles are backing up or being driven in a tight space. Working in manufacturing, where we use cranes, forklifts, and trucks, it is likely you will be asked to spot for a coworker. When that happens, you'll need an understanding of what to look for, where to stand, and how to use hand signals to communicate clearly. In this video, we'll cover those topics and train you how to spot safely. First, let's talk about what you should wear. Always have PP that is appropriate for the environment you are in. In the case of our shop, you'll need a hard hat, safety glasses, hearing protection, and safety toed shoes. Additionally, you want to wear clothing that will make you easy to see. Bright colored or reflective clothes are best. If you are spotting for a truck or forklift traveling on the road, we require you wear a high visibility vest. These can be found in our inventory area. Apart from clothing, there are a few tools you may need. One is a two-way radio. These are required in situations where the driver cannot see the spotter or hear verbal signals. For larger moves, when multiple spotters are involved, two-way radios are the best way for everyone to stay informed about what's going on. Usually this occurs when forklifts or cranes are moving large loads. If you are spotting in a trafficked area, like a walkway, aisle, parking lot, or on the street, you should make sure barricades are set up to safely block traffic and keep people out. This will allow you to keep your focus on the move. If you are spotting for a truck in our parking lot or on the main road, you will need at least one person with a stop slow sign to control traffic. This person's job is only to control traffic, not to work as a spotter for the truck. Next, let's go over when the spotter is needed. The purpose of having a spotter is to aid a driver in seeing things they can't see themselves, including pedestrians, materials, and obstructions. So, spotters are needed when equipment and vehicles are being operated in spaces with limited visibility, when loads are obstructing visibility, or when vehicles are backing up. Keep in mind that a spotter's job is to watch out for themselves too. They should stand clear of the moving vehicle or load and never put themselves in a position where they can't move out of the way. When a spotter needs to reposition themselves, they should do so by walking forward with their eyes focused on the path in front of them. Never walk backward or sideways or have your eyes focused on something else while walking. This will lead to a trip and fall injury. And of course, when spotting, a spotter's attention should be focused on the move. Do not get distracted by people, cell phones, or other activities in the area. If you need to talk to someone or answer a call, stop the move until you can give your full attention. If you are spotting for a large move, like a crane lift, you should have a meeting with the people involved before the move starts. Usually this will be led by the crane supervisor or the job lead. The meeting will cover important details about the vehicle or object being moved, the destination and the path of travel, the method of communication, hand signals, the location where the spotters will stand, and any safety concerns caused by the move. This is a good time to ask questions and get clarification on the plan. Though, it's important to remember, if you are ever confused or uncomfortable about what's happening when you are spotting, you should stop the move. Only continue when you have clarification and are confident the move is safe. Now let's review common hand signals used by spotters to communicate with vehicles and equipment operators. These should be used in loud environments or when a spotter's distance from the operator will make it hard to hear. Extending your arm and pointing your finger to the driver's right means turn right. Extending your arm and pointing your finger to the driver's left means turn left. This hand signal can be used whether the spotter is in the front or the back. They will place their elbows at chest level with hands raised, making two fingers and constant backward hand and finger movement, signaling the forklift to come towards them. Here's an example of the forklift going forward. 
and now backwards with this same hand gesture. Putting your hands up, creating a fist with elbow bent facing away to the side of the body means stop. Placing one hand at chest level, holding fist on the other hand at chest level means emergency stop. Then there are hand signals specific to cranes and forklifts. A close hand with finger pointing up and circling means raise the crane, hook, or forklift mast up. A close hand with finger pointing down and circling means lower the crane hook or forklift mast down. Two hands together starting at center chest making a fist with thumbs pointing out and slowly separating hand in an outward direction to side of body means spread the forks. Two hands together making a fist with thumbs pointing inwards towards each other and starting just outside your chest area slowly closing towards middle of chest means close forks. Making a fist with the thumb up and rotating it backwards means tilt mass back. Making a fist with a thumb up and rotating it forward means tilt mass forward. That's a lot to remember, but don't worry about it if you forget one or two. There are posters throughout the shop that tell you how to use the spotting hand signals. Now, let's talk about the operator's visibility. Whether they are driving a forklift or operating a crane, the operator is relying on his or her spotters to point out objects as they are moving. They will be focused on listening to your instructions, so don't assume they see what you see. With that in mind, you should be aware of common blind spots. With trucks, the driver sits up high, creating a blind spot about 10 feet in front of the truck. When you're standing behind a truck, know that if you cannot see a driver's face through the side mirrors, you are in a blind spot. With forklifts, the blind spots are similar to those on a car. The operators won't be able to see objects that are close to the rear of the forklift, and they'll have limited vision to right or left side. If there is a load on the forklift, the operator will not be able to see in the front of it. With cranes, the operator will not be able to see around the load or on the back side of the load. For larger loads, the operator will not be able to see the sides of the load and they will have limited visibility above the load. Finally, spotters should ensure they are standing in a location where it is safe. This means they are far enough distance from trucks, forklifts, and cranes that if something were to go wrong, they would not be hurt. If you cannot find a safe location to spot, stop the move. Talk to the operator about how you can reorganize the move so you have space to spot safely. This could mean using radios or adding additional spotters to the move so each one can stand a little further away. If you can't come up with a safe way to move forward, contact the safety department for help. And that's it. That's what you need to know in order to be a good spotter. I'm Victor, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.